Ulf. At the time of presenting, I'm a student at the University of Sheffield and part of the Greenland Materials Research Group. In this tutorial, we will cover the basics of two-level factorial designs with Minitab. Two-factor factorial designs are part of the Design of Experiments framework. The DOE toolbox um, offers experimental designs to plan experiments and to analyze experimental observations with multivariate statistics. Design of experiments is used to empirically solve complex problems involving multiple factors and often a large amount of them. The general design of experiments framework um, consists of constructing an, an experimental design, then performing the experiment and finally analyzing the experimental observations. What are two-level factorial designs? Uh, factorial designs are systematic designs to plan and perform and also analyze experiments in an efficient way. They are frequently used for factor screening purposes when uh, it is wished to figure out which factors are statistically significant for a response. By statistical significance, we mean which factors affect the response more significantly than the random experimental fluctuation. In other words, which factor or factors outperform the noise. Let's imagine we do a chemical reaction in which we have reagents containing silicon and nitrogen. And we want to investigate which of the three factors, pH, silicon to nitrogen ratio, and silicon concentration, are significant for the response, which will be the Vt surface area of our product that we make. We will use a two-level factorial design to try and answer this question. Now we will turn to the Minitab software. When you open Minitab, you see the toolbar, you see the navigator, and you see the data pane with different worksheets and also the output pane. To create a two-level factorial design, we go to STAT, DOE, Factorial, Create Factorial Design. We choose two-level factorial. We said we have three factors. And now we can also uh, display all the available designs in mini tabs. In mini tab, uh, green colored uh, full factorial designs are free from aliasing. However, um, the yellow colored or even the red colored uh, fractional factorial designs contain some aliasing. For example, for this uh, four factor fractional factorial design, the resolution is four. The advantage of this is that this design only requires eight runs, whereas the equivalent full factorial design would require double that amount of runs. But the disadvantage is that main that um, this design contains aliasing. This means that main factors are aliased with three factor interactions in this particular design. For example, A is aliased with B, C, and D. And also two factor interactions are aliased with each other. So the AB factor interaction would be aliased with CD. Usually three factor interactions are rarely actually significant. So we are fine with the first one, but two factor interactions can be significant. So when evaluating the statistical significance of AB, we don't know whether this is for AB or for CD or both, because both because the factors are said to be confounded. In this example, we want the full factorial design for eight for, uh, for three factors requiring eight runs. So we go to design, full factorial. We will say we want zero number of center points and we want two replicates of the corner points. An analysis of variance or ANOVA requires at least a duplicate observation. So either the center point could be duplicated or the corner points or both. It is also possible to just run a single replicate, but then the analysis uses something called length method, L-E-N-T-H, which is inferior to an ANOVA. So we keep this and we just want our experiments to be performed in a single block. Click OK. 
Then the next step is to choose our factors. We said we have the pH, we have the silicon to nitrogen ratio, and we also have the silicon concentration. Now, any factor can be either numeric or quantitative, or it can be text, that means qualitative. The pH, because it's possible to um, change the pH over a range, this would be a good candidate for a numeric factor. But if you investigate two different amounts of reactants, uh, sorry, two different types of reactants, then that factor would be a good candidate for a um, qualitative or a text factor. Then each factor has a low and a high level. We'll choose pH 6 and 8, silicon to nitrogen ratio of 0 0.5 to 2, and silicon concentration 30 to 60. These levels should cover as much of the experimental range as practical. Okay, options. Here we choose not to fold our design. And uh, for ease in working with the data, we also choose not to randomize our designs. It is, however, good practice to randomize the actual experiments to avoid introducing bias. And then the results are fine. Click OK and Militab produces our two-level full factorial design for, two fact for three factors. The factors and levels are displayed in the worksheet. And in the navigator we see what we are currently working on. It is often useful to visualize the experiment. So we go to stat dre factorial q plot. OK and Minitab produces a geometric representation of the design. The second step in the DOE workflow is to perform the experiments. And once this has been done, the observations can be inserted into the worksheet we just created. Our response is the BT surface area. And I will copy and paste my experimental observations. Now to analyze, the experimental the, to analyze the design, um, which is the third and last step, we go to stat DOE factorial analyze factorial design and we choose the response BT. To, to um, perform the analysis, Minitab will fit a first order model to the design, which we can see here. Uh, it is first order because the highest exponent of any factor is 1. To analyze all factors and all interactions, we keep all the selected terms. We don't worry about covariates. Under options, we are required to choose a, a level of a confidence level. The level of significance alpha, which is 100 minus the confidence level is the probability of committing a type 1 error, which means erroneously identifying a non-significant factor to be significant. We want this chance to be just 1%, so we choose 99, but um, some people use 95% as well, or 90%. The equivalent type 2 error would then be to erroneously identify a significant factor to be non-significant, but this is harder to calculate. Okay, we don't worry about stepwise. Under graphs, we choose our preferences, for example, a half normal plot and the four in one residual plots. Under results, we can just focus on what we're interested in, which is the result of the analysis of variance. And storage is fine. We click OK and Minitab performs the analysis of variance. The output that we look at is the ANOVA table, which has the factors on the left-hand side, on, in the left-hand column. We have the main factors, pH, SI to N and SI, and also the factor interactions here. 
the most important column is the p-value column and any factor or factor interaction is said to be statistically significant when the p-value is less than the level of significance which is 0.01 in our case because we chose that. We can see that for the pH factor the p-value is less than 0.01 that's also the case for the for the silicon to nitrogen ratio and this is also the case for the interaction of both factors. All other factors have p-values greater than or equal to 0.01 and are therefore said to be not significant. SI has 0.01 p-value so this is a borderline case. We can see the statistical factor, the significant factors uh, also in the half normal plot where non-significant factors would lie on a would lie on this straight line or very close to it and statistically significant factors lie far away from it. Because the ANOVA is based on a normal distribution, we need to check if our experimental observations are at all normally distributed. On the normal probability plot, the data uh, could be admittedly more normally distributed and ideally it should lie on this straight line. But this deviation is not too severe for the purpose of this tutorial. On the, on the residual versus fitted value plot, the plot marks should ideally be contained in a broad horizontal band. This outward opening funnel shape indicates that more variability in our experimental observations is present when the BT surface area was higher than at low BT surface area. So maybe these, experiment should, these, these experiments should be uh, better controlled. Quite often it is also useful to visualize the output. For this we can do 3D surface plots by do, doing DOE factorial surface plot, generate plots for all pairs, And here we see how the pH and the silicon to nitrogen ratio affect the BT surface area over our experimental range. Now, if you imagine rotating that cube so that we see it from the top, then the result would be a contour plot. So, um, finally, it's possible to copy or print this picture and in the uh, mini tab Windows version it's also possible to send uh, these pictures to Microsoft Word or PowerPoint. Finally, uh, if there is some further reading required, there is of course the mini tab um, handbook or manual. Then uh, there is a, a manual uh, written by Montgomery for Minitab. Also this book contains some Minitab examples and then there is also this older version of the Minitab handbook. To conclude, this tutorial gave a brief introduction to designing and analyzing two-level factorial designs for the purpose of factor screening in Minitab. Please email me for any further clarifications and thank you very much.